Let's do something multiple times. Let's do something multiple times. Let's do something multiple times. Let's look at loops. Alright, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at loops. Now, first of all, we start once again with our three arrays right here. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial, I highly recommend watching this because this is basically going to build on that as well. So we will use the arrays in this tutorial also. However, right now, let's think about, well, we have something. Let's just say for the sake of argument, we actually want to output every number from 0 to 100. Well, I mean, that's as easy as this, right? So we're just going to start here and then, well, you know, control D to duplicate the... Okay, I mean, let's be honest. Okay, maybe we can do multiple ones, but then we still have to change this. Well, there's something, that we, you know, we can hold Alt and then change a lot of them, but we, we can only change those to, like, the same number. It's like, it, it's it's all sorts of messed up. It doesn't work, of course. Now, there's something that can be done with this, and that is going to be a loop. So a loop in a sense, is a piece of code that is repeatedly done until, well, a certain, let's say, maybe an if statement hits it and then says, hey, then we're done now, or something else sort of breaks out of the loop. Now, there are two, like, particular loops we're going to look at. One of them is the for loop. So we're just going to type in for, for, and then parentheses, int i equals zero. I'm going to explain what the, all of this means in just a moment. And then the semicolon, i is smaller than, let's just say, 100 for the time being, semicolon i++. Plus plus. And then the curly brackets, once again, when you type in the first curly bracket, the second should be done automatically, so it should generate automatically. And we're just going to take this system here and put it in here. And now, watch this. I'm going to put in the i as an output. And now, look what I can do. I'm going to print out everything until 99, fair enough. But as you can see, every number until 99 now has been printed out. So that's curious, isn't it? A for loop in this case, this one, right, is everything inside of the curly brackets is done a hundred times. So this looks kind of weird at first glance, especially for a beginner, no worries at all. Let's think about this. So we define a variable inside of this for loop, okay? That, that's not too crazy, you know, we've seen this, you know, we've seen int i or int x, could be anything, right, doesn't need to be i, this is just sort of a convention. And we immediately assign it the value 0. Everything's fine. This is just needed because this is basically a new instruction. We're just going to write all of that in one line. That's just sort of the standard or the convention. So also nothing too crazy. And then right here, we actually have a Boolean value, right? Because we're comparing something, right? We're comparing i, the, the integer i that we've created, with 100. And we're saying i is smaller than 100. And then we're going to have this i++. So what happens here is that we go into this for loop, we're setting i to 0, then we're asking, hey, is i smaller than 100? If that is true, then we're going to execute everything that's inside of the loop, so inside of these uh, curly brackets, which would be called the scope. So this is basically what's inside of here. And then after everything's right here, then we're going to increase i by 1, right, with this i++, with, which we've also seen in the assignment operators. Then as soon as this becomes false, then we stop. So that means if i is 100, that's the first time that this is not equal to each other, then this does not get executed anymore. Therefore, this is why we don't print out the 100 as well, because we only printed out 99, and then i became 100. Therefore, this became false. Therefore, the for loop basically, you know, finished. And then everything afterwards, you know, happens completely normally. So that's the sort of the basic idea of a for loop and now i'm gonna absolutely break everyone's mind here because the for loop is really cool because it allows us to do something like this let's just say hey i want you to print out every question and answer sort of pair right so question zero and answer zero question one answer one and so on and so forth now let's imagine we actually had a hundred of those once again Ooh, well we've seen this you know we can just system print out question zero and so on and so forth but that's going to be a lot. Well, what we can do is we can do a for loop. So for, right? And then once again, int i equals zero. i is smaller than, and now look at this, questions.length. Because of course we know we can get the length of this array. Hmm, interesting. And then i++. So now what we can do, I'm going to copy over this one, select it, control C, control V, and I'm going to do it twice. Because now 
what I want to do is I want to say questions. I. Look at this. Now I'm printing out the question and I'm passing in the integer I. And this, of course, changes until we get to the length, which is exactly where we want to stop. And the same thing here, I can say, well, let's just do answers I then as well. And now when I run this, you can see that after the, you know, 99 or the 100 numbers are counted through, you can see how many states does the USA have, 50, capital London, and then iron symbol FE. So this is incredibly powerful for going through, you know, these sorts of lists or, you know, arrays in this case. This is something we could not have done if we weren't using arrays. That's once again a thing where you couldn't do this with something like this question and then like question I. Uh, that doesn't work, right? That That's not, <laughs> that doesn't work. So this is particular for this. Now loops doesn't, like they don't have to be always used with strings or lists or sort of these uh, things where you can loop through, iterate through, so to speak. They don't have to always necessarily be with this, but that is like the for loop, definitely one of the main things where this is used. And there's even, well, a sort of a, another type of for loop, which is the for each loop. Now this is written like this, for, and you can actually see there are some examples here that you can pre-generate. We're not going to do those. I mean, it's pretty much, as you can see, it then just generates this and you can immediately rename stuff here, but we're going to not worry for that the time being. So we're going to do for once again this. And now we actually define a variable, the variable that is inside of our collection list array here. So this, this is of course string, right? And we're going to call this the question and then put in a colon and then put in the, well, a string array here in this case or the list or whatever you might have. Once again, we of course need the curly brackets. And then what we can do is we can actually, you know, use this question here. So once again, I'm going to copy this control C, control V, and then instead of I, I now have question available to me, right? So this variable. And if I do this, then all of the questions get actually output. As I can see, I now have the ability to do this as well. So we're basically for each element, right? This is the element of a particular list array, something like that. So that's sort of the idea of the for each loop. Also very useful, right? and really cool as well. So I hope you can see that th that's like really cool stuff here already with, with just like these three things. And there's one more loop, which is going to be the while loop. Now, usually, and this is a personal bias of mine, I will absolutely admit this. I don't like the while loop because the while loop tends to generate an endless loop, meaning that your program crashes. That is something that every programmer will have to go through at some point. It just is what it is. The while loop looks like the following. You put type in while, and then inside of the parentheses here, you have a Boolean expression. We're just going to put in true because that's of course also a Boolean expression. And then once again, we need the curly brackets. Now everything inside of those curly brackets is basically executed while this is true. This of course makes, you know, if, when you see this, you should be like, wait a second. That means that this is an endless loop. Yes, this would be an endless loop in this case. Therefore, of course, we would need to be a little bit careful about this. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is I'm actually going to show you two cool like keywords which you can use in loops. They can be used in either for loops or while loops. We're going to say system.out.println. There you go. And then we just want to say, do you want to continue? Interesting. Okay, that's kind of weird. And then we're actually going to define a scanner up here. This is something we've seen previously, of course, right? We just write scanner, or the scanner equals new scanner and put in system.in. So this, once again, we're, we're sort of creeping into this. We're like, wait, well, we've seen this new with the areas here as well. So, okay, no, don't worry. We're going to know what this means in not too long uh, tutorials, right? A few more tutorials, and then we are going to know what this means. For the time being, we're just going to keep it like it is and say, okay, this, this is how it's going to work. And then here, we're just going to say the following. If scanner dot next, right? So this basically waits until the user has put something in. If that equals yes, then what we're going to do is we're going to continue and we're just going to write continue done, right? There you go. And then if the user does not, has not typed in yes, then what we're going to do is we're going to break. We've seen the break keyword before with the switch statements. And in here, when you use it inside of a loop, this means that it immediately jumps to the end of the loop outside of the loop, right? And the continue basically jumps at the, to the top of the loop. So we're continuing with the loop or breaking out of the loop. So that's sort of the idea of these two keywords can be really useful. 
usually I've seen a lot of people not like them because they sort of interrupt the flow of yeah you know, how you can read the loop. Because if you have a lot of break and continues in a loop, then you can't like neatly read through it from top to bottom. I can understand this. However, it's still important that you know these keywords because sometimes they might be useful, especially in this, you know, in this endless loop, right? Because this, of course, this is a while loop and and this is endless. Right? So because of course this true is always going to be true. So let's just see what we can do if we run this, right? Um, we're actually going to, okay, that is because I have imported some other stuff here. Don't worry about this. This has just happened because um, when I typed in the system, it took some other things. Now it, everything is going to work. Now you can see, do you want to continue? I, I can type in anything, right? Control. It's going to continue. Right. Uh, of course. Wait a second. Of course it's not going to continue. Because <laughs> I have to type in yes to continue. Otherwise it will break. Right, 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 right. That's of course with everything planned. So I have to type in yes and then we're going to continue. And if I type in yes, then we're going to continue again. And if I type in yes, we're going to continue again. So this is of course the continue. If I type in anything, then it's going to break out of it. This also includes yes written with a big Y. Because we're going to be equaling, right? We're looking at equals exactly this. Very important, right? So this is something where, once again, the string has to match exactly. We could, for example, do something like the following. Just as an example, we could say to lowercase, meaning that everything we've written in here, we're going to convert to lowercase and then we're going to equal it. And now all of a sudden, if I write this in caps, it's still going to work because we're converting it to lowercase. So that's some very interesting thing to think about when you receive input from the user and you try to also take a look at it. That's sort of a like a, a side lesson, so to speak. But yeah, overall, this is sort of the idea with loops. They can be incredibly useful. And maybe sometimes what you've heard is when you're playing a game, there's a game loop. So that's sometimes what this might be referring to. And sort of like way, way, way older games, there might be like an actual while loop in the background that sort of checks, hey, is this happening? Is this happening? Is this happening? And yeah, so that's loops for you incredibly useful incredibly important tool to have in your toolkit if any questions remain of course always feel free to ask in the comments below and i'll try to answer them best i can otherwise we are at the end of this tutorial right here i hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did i would of course appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one so yeah